drunk driving still rampant on city roads. Traditional Tubuan culture opens doors to the media. And all Queensland NRL Grand Finals set for showdown. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. A very good evening to you and thanks for joining me with Sunday's news. It's good to have your company again. Drink driving in Port Moresby is becoming more rampant despite police roadblocks. Yesterday, a white mini SUV was full of intoxicated passengers when a 15-seater bus clipped it, causing it to overturn in front of Barber Park at East Barranco. MTV's Jack LaPave Jr. with this report. Road accidents are becoming common in Port Moresby. Despite roadblocks being carried out in various parts of the city by traffic, intoxicated drivers still take the risk of driving around. Yesterday, there were two reported traffic accidents, both involved intoxicated drivers. At Five Mile, motorists and passengers escaped serious injuries when a Route 15 PMV bus collided with a taxi. Witnesses said the accident was alcohol-related and that the taxi driver was at fault, failing to stop at the giveaway sign at an intersection. The second accident happened at East Boroko in front of the Bava Park. A 15-seater bus tipped off a sedan full of intoxicated passengers. The driver of the bus ran off after being afraid for his life. Police arrived 15 minutes later but both vehicle owners were not around for questioning. Police say drink driving is becoming common with motorists not considering traffic laws. With the festive season nearing, police say they will tighten up on intoxicated motorists in the city. Jack Lapave Jr. National MTV News. Papua New Guinea's Minister for Foreign Affairs and Immigration, Rem Pato, has sought the support of the United States regarding Pacific Island state issues, including climate change. In lieu of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, Minister Pato raised the issues during a Pacific Islands Forum leaders meet with the United States Assistant Secretary of State, Mr. Danny Russell, in New York on Friday. Minister Pato stressed the need for United States backing at the 21st Conference of Parties, or COP21, to be held in Paris in November, where PIF leaders will bring up for discussion climate issues and the severity of its impact on Pacific communities. The powerful nation responded, saying it is aware of the threat brought about by climate change and extreme weather behavior in the Pacific. Assistant Secretary Russell and his team received a briefing on the Pacific Regionalism Framework endorsed by the recent PAF Leaders Meet in PNG, which touches on areas of concern and aspirations of the people of the Pacific, such as fisheries, climate change, cervical cancer and West Papua. Assistant Secretary Russell told the delegation that whilst the U.S. administration wished to do more, the political dynamics in Washington does not always help the administration's desire in this regard. However, he adds that the United States is a Pacific state and appreciates the need for solidarity with the PIF countries in advancing issues of common concern. Vanessa Knight, National MTV News. The Tubuan and Tabu Shell money remain as items of great value in the traditional East New Britain Tolai society. They play significant roles in traditional gathering in the province, such as sacred initiations. This was one of the few times media was allowed to film a Warwakai, a sacred gathering involving Tubuans and Tabu Shell money. MTV's Edwin Fidelis has this story. <laughs> The East New Britain people have a long, rich history of a traditional culture that resonates with the Tubons and Tabu Shell money. This was one of the few times media was allowed to film and take pictures of a sacred initiation. It is a story of young boys and men who leave their family to learn how to live on their own by going through endeavors that may last for some months. They live in the bushes where they are taught traditional knowledge by village elders about the way of life. A belief that after going through this initiation process, they can be able to take on challenges in life. And this gathering on Friday morning marks the end of the initiation process. We play banana, pig, tabu, 
I go. For their relatives, it was a relief when they saw their sons and fathers for the first time again after many weeks. And amongst those initiated was the East New Britain police boss, Anthony Wagambi Jr. I'm by support from Hakim Jong, work with me too long. We part of the society where we can bring more people now. To talk long all the time with people gatherings. While it may not be appealing to many people, the initiation represents the passing on of powers and authority, one of the practices that is still kept alive in the Tolai society for many years. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. You're watching National MTV News tonight. We'll have more local stories when we come back. Stay with us. Good to have you back with Sunday's news. Eastern Islands Province is aiming to share opportunities and common beliefs, benefits rather, with the Guangdong Province of the People's Republic of China. Eastern Islands Governor Julie Soso said construction, agriculture, hybrid energy, mining and climate change are areas of high importance. A delegation from Guangdong visited the province recently to strengthen this relationship. Eastern Highlands Province has opened its doors to the province of Guangdong in China to establish mutual understanding and allow the exchange of ideas to develop people in both provinces. A Chinese delegation led by Vice Chairman of the Guangdong Provincial Congress, Jiang Ziang, visited the provincial capital of Gorka recently. Chinese influence in Eastern Highlands has been critical in the development of the people and the province. This was again strengthened when the two provinces signed a memorandum of understanding during the meet. A historical occasion for this province to be extending its friendship beyond international borders and that is the MOU signed this evening prior to this dinner. Eastern Highlands Governor Julie Soso said this friendship will accelerate in a long but stable diplomatic manner maximize mutual participation from our local people in sharing common benefits. His Excellency Xiao Zhang said the province is set to make history with Eastern Highlands people. Gives were exchanged between the two provinces to begin this friendship, with Mr. Zhang hardly resisting to try out the famous Highlands woven hat. <laughs> Jack LaPava, Jr., National MTV News. The PNG Indian community enjoyed a colourful evening of celebrations last night at the Sir John Guy Stadium to commemorate 34 years of bilateral friendship with PNG. The Indian Night Cultural Showcase is an annual event organised to recognise the growth of both countries and contributions of the Indian community to their foster home, PNG. To name a few, this year's celebrated milestones include Dr. Subha Rao's Order of Logahoo Award for Distinguished Contributions to the PNG Education Sector, a major donation of 150,000 kina, and advanced IT services to the Pomgen Hospital, the establishment of bus shelters in the city, and the introduction and hosting of the first ever International Yoga Day held at the Yellow Beach. Well, turning overseas now, despite the autumn weather, the number of refugees and migrants arriving in Greece continues to climb and is soon expected to reach the 400,000 mark. According to the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, Greece remains by far the largest single entry point for new sea arrivals in the Mediterranean, followed by Italy with 131,000 arrivals so far this year. The total is close to 530,000 of people having crossed the Mediterranean this year. UNHCR also noted that the continuing high rate of arrivals underlines the need for the fast implementation of Europe's relocation program jointly with the establishment of robust facilities to receive, assist, register and screen all people arriving by sea. The UN Refugee Agency is also concerned that the lack of reception capacity in Greece could seriously jeopardize the relocation program agreed upon by the European Council as eligible refugees have nowhere to stay while awaiting relocation. 
The small island of Lesvos, once a popular tourist resort, has been at the front line of this influx of arrivals. Khaled and his wife Manal fled the war in Syria. They sold all they could to reach safety in Europe. When we got in the dinghy and I saw the huge waves, I wanted to turn back. But where can I go back to? We were forced to flee. I was afraid for my children. If anything happened to them, I was responsible. Authorities here do all they can to cope with the influx, providing resting points and registration centers. At the point in Mytilene, Khaled and his family wait for the ferry to Athens, one of thousands here hoping to reach mainland Europe. But as they leave, the cycle of arrivals on Lesbos begins again. We arrived on that side and slept the night. We had to inflate the dinghy and we were on the sea for over an hour. We arrived thanks to God. We did this for our children. Neville Choi, MTV World News. Well, tragic scenes there from asylum seekers and refugees arriving in Greece. National MTV News continues with True Guy Sports and the All Queensland NRL Grand Final is hours away. We'll bring you a preview of that game coming up next. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome and thanks for joining me with Trukai Sports. Well, the stage is set for the 2015 NRL Grand Final when the Brisbane Broncos lock horns with the North Queensland Cowboys this evening. Both teams have created history with today's Grand Final between two Queensland teams for the very first time. The most highly anticipated match of the season is set for this evening. It's been called the Battle of Queensland between the Brisbane Broncos and the North Queensland Cowboys. The Broncos boast a young side that have come of age and will be tested on one of rugby league's biggest stage, with the combination in the halves between Anthony Milford and Ben Hunt proving all season that they are one of the key factors to Brisbane's success. Now to Hunt, he'll kick, he puts a kick in behind. And with Justin Hodges playing his final match this evening, the game will be hard fought for the men from Brisbane. Further up the state of Queensland, the Cowboys have shown class each week, with captain Jonathan Thurston at helm and in devastating form, playing some of the best football in his career. Now for Thurston, the grabber kick, gets a try, O'Neill, Justin O'Neill. The North Queenslanders lineup sees experience in the likes of Matt Scott, James Tamo and Jason Tamalolo, who will need to be playing their best football if they want to claim the Premiership. The Cowboys are chasing their maiden Premiership, and with a chance to have their names written in the history books, they will be a tough side to beat. However, the Broncos are coming in red hot and have master coach Wayne Bennett right behind them. The 2015 NRL Grand Final might just boil down to the final minutes. Dion Combang, National MTV Sports. The winner of the 2015 Intercity Cup in Papua New Guinea and the champions of the Vodafone Cup in Fiji will compete in Port Moresby in the inaugural Rugby League Melanesian Club Championship on the 10th of October. The match will be played at the New Look Sir John Guy Stadium where both clubs will play off for a regional title. The match will promote and enhance the respective national competitions, give the local teams something extra to aspire to and provide an international competition for our elite domestic teams and players to compete in. And in AFL, the Hawthorne Hawks defeated West Coast Eagles 107 points to 61 to claim the 2015 Toyota Cup for a third consecutive year. Despite the injury list taking a toll on the West Coast lineup, a fractured defence were among the many challenges in the match. The Hawks joined a handful of clubs, including the Brisbane Lions and Collingwood Magpies, in taking three titles in a row. The Melbourne cricket ground erupted into a roar when Hawks halfback Grant Bruchel plastered a goal 30 metres out in the first quarter. 
defense at the moment, Willingham, puts it across to Shepard, couldn't find a way through, got it to Butler, he scrambles a kick, only about 30 metres out, Virtual gets it from Mitchell and punishes him. Indecision, plus the West Coast Eagles. The big plays continued through to the second quarter when Luke Hodge bent it like Beckham for a goal. The pocket here, wanting Hodge to win a one-on-one -on -one against Schofield. Puopolo got a high tackle, back to Hodge. That's a goal, I think. It is. Hodge has done it from nowhere. At the end of the second quarter, the Hawks drew a 31-point lead over West Coast, 57 points to 26. In the third quarter, Hawks held on to a 30-point lead with five goals and one behind to West Coast, one goal and one behind. An untidy defense cost West Coast dearly in the third and final quarter and managed to post three goals and two behinds, going down to Hawks 107 points to 61. So, the last moments. Gaff and Pritis. So, Hawthorne have done it. The first team in the 18-team competition to go back back. Hawthorne becomes the fifth club to take three premiership titles in a row. Skola Sengi, National MTV Sports. Well, that story wraps up our True Guy Sports segment for tonight. Stay tuned. We have the weather details. That's coming up next. True Guy Sports. True Kai Sports. Now let's take a quick look at the weather forecast for the next 12 hours. In southern region, Port Moresby and Darug to look forward to dry and windy weather. In Momase, Le and Madang to look forward to fine weather. In the New Guinea Islands, all centres to look forward to brief showers, except Kimbe, mostly fine. And lastly, in the islands, all centre is mostly fine, then morning fog. Now, before we go, a quick recap of our top stories again tonight. Alcohol-related accidents on the rise in the nation's capital. Also, Tolai people of East New Britain still value Tumbuan and Shell money. And the Brisbane Broncos and North Queensland Cowboys battle it out tonight in a first All-Queensland NRL Grand Final. And that's how we wrap up the bulletin this Sunday, the 4th of October 2015. We now take you to action leading up to the actual Grand Final. But enjoy the NRL Grand Final between the Brisbane Broncos and North Queensland Cowboys. That will feature at 6.30. May the best team win. From me to you, go the Brisbane Broncos. On behalf of the news team, I'm Tokana Asavi. Good night.